No happy, successful person is spending any time putting negative comments on other people's pages. Not a one. So if somebody is commenting negatively or making fun of you or saying something mean on your content, it has absolutely nothing to do with you because happy, successful people don't do that. Welcome everybody to the Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Chris Harder Show. Today, you are in for a treat because I'm going to sit down with a good friend of mine, Jen Gottlieb. Now, if you don't already know who Jen is, she is one of the most sought after keynote speakers in the entire world of entrepreneurship right now. I am not kidding. She gets paid tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars per speech just to step on stage. And she's been voted one of the top motivational and business speakers out there in 2023. Now, aside from being so sought after as this incredible motivating speaker, she is the co-founder of Super Connector Media, which really helps you build your personal brand and be seen a lot more than what you are right now. Hence, her brand new book titled Be Seen. Now, with 2024 coming up, You need to make sure that you are expanding your personal brand and being seen by more people and engaging with more people so that you can sell your products easier, right? The more people that can see you and find you, the easier it is for you to move your really important products and services. So that's what we're going to talk about today. She is a master self-brand builder, and we're going to dive into what you can do to really build your personal brand in 2024. Now, Jen and I have become friends over the course of many, many years, being at different events together. And one of those events, being it together, is a mastermind. And we have our elite entrepreneur mastermind that is getting real close to being sold out for 2024. Matter of fact, we just had three more people join us this week. So, I mean, we're real close to getting sold out. So, if you're going to make more than $500,000 in 2024, matter of fact, most people in this room are seven and eight figure earners. And you want to be a part of this really special family that I put together once a year, every year, where we lock arms and lift each other up and share shortcuts and share ideas and make referrals to each other and share customers. And like, literally, it is the best mastermind out there. And I don't even have a problem saying that, even though it's my own. If you're gonna make more than $500,000 this year, then you need to rush over and apply. Because the last few spots I want to be really picky with. The last few spots I want to make sure it's somebody who helps me deliver on my promise that everything you need is in that room or one introduction away in 2024. So that means you may not have the biggest business in the room, or you might, but what's most important to me is that you fulfill one of those needs by adding diversity in skill sets, diversity in business, diversity in connections in that room. So rush over to chrisharder.me forward slash mastermind. Check it out there and hit apply. Again, rush over to chrisharder.me forward slash mastermind. Check it out. And when you hit apply, as long as your application is one that the team approves, you and I are going to jump on Zoom, have a great chat back and forth about what your goals are for 2024, and see if we are a perfect fit for each other. You for the mastermind and the mastermind, of course, for you. So seriously, hit pause real quick. Go over to chrisharder.me forward slash mastermind. Fill up the quick application, and you and I will see each other on Zoom. All right, guys, get ready because at the end of this episode, not only are you going to learn a ton from Jen on building your personal brand, but we do a fun little giveaway to grab a free copy of her book. So get ready, take some notes, because here we go. Jen Gottlieb, my dear, dear friend, how how are you? I'm so good. How are you, Chris? Good. You know what people miss? They miss all the chatter before we actually hit record of like how freaking excited we are to see each other. All the plans like, okay, we got to go here on this weekend. We got to do all these things. I want everyone to know right out of the bat, you're one of the dopest people on the planet. One of the realest people on the planet to be able to talk about being seen. 
Oh, thank you. I was actually thinking when we were just chatting, I was like, you should have hit record because we go deep so fast. We don't BS not even for a second about the weather or anything. We're just like, hey, we went right into a really deep conversation. I was like, oh man, we should have pressed record, but we'll get back there. But thank you for that compliment. The word dope is one of my favorites of all time. (laughs) Ultimate, ultimate compliment. I wasn't going to start here, but maybe we should start here. What do you think it is that when we all get together, we don't waste any time talking about surface level stuff. We immediately, even like when we jumped on the Zoom, talk about, okay, why did you move and, and what has shifted in you? Like we go right for what is important. Why do you think that is? What is it in us as humans that make us do that? And how does it correlate to our success? Well, I think with us, we've formed that relationship over time. Mm-hmm. I do. I believe that we've always intentionally put ourselves in rooms whenever we're together. And even from the very beginning of our friendship, we've always been in rooms. That's how we met where everybody in that environment was also of that mindset. So it was really easy for us to build our friendship around, we go deep here. It's safe. It's safe to go deep because I'm sure that a lot of people listening to this, because I know a lot of people that tune into to my stuff feel this way. And I felt this way in the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. When you first start on maybe a personal growth path or a self-help path or an entrepreneurial path, it can be very, very lonely because Often, often, not always, a lot of people that are around you in that moment in time are not really ready for it. No. Maybe they don't understand why, what, what in abundance, what maybe they all maybe have that conditioning of more of a victim mindset or more of a scarcity mindset, more stuck in their ways. And when you're trying to explore personal growth, basically like a growth mindset, which is completely different. It can become really noticeable and really uncomfortable to be around people that don't think that way. And it can get really frustrating. So a natural path for me when I was in that space of really transitioning into starting to think differently and look at the world differently and build the reality that I wanted, I started putting myself in rooms with other people who also were that way, which was incredibly important because I felt so alone in my regular community. And that's where we met. And I believe that when you meet people in those circles where it's already a thing, that everybody here is cool to dive right deep on in, and we all have that similar mindset of where we want to be and where we want to go and and the way that we want to think, everybody is, it's just like fire. And then whenever we see each other, we just tap right back in. And I think that that's, it all started there where how we met and like the intention of the place that we all put ourselves in to make that relationship. And I'm so grateful for that because like, oh my gosh, like if I didn't have friends like you, it would be really difficult to go through the world still growing every day the way that I'm trying to do. It is. It's difficult. It's lonely. You feel like an oddball. You feel like an outcast. You think, what's wrong with me that my other friends don't see how excited I am about this path that I, I want to go on or this business I want to start, right? I don't think people understand the value in finding like-minded people and where to find them at events where someone literally curated this box for you and said, hey, go here. There's people that are just like you because it's so damn lonely. It is so damn intimidating. It is so damn difficult to do this thing on your own when you're in the beginning surrounded by people who, no pun intended, are holding you back from being seen, right? Because like your goals are, okay, I want to get on this rocket ship and first I got to build it and, and here's my dreams. And the people around you are like, Hey man, why are you being so shiny? Hey, why are you being so bold? Hey, why are you dreaming so big? And it's so tough. So you gotta, you have to pull yourself out of that environment and you have to go put yourself in these safe environments that are curated for you where you know the other people are there with the same idea so that you can be seen for who you truly are becoming, maybe not for who you were in the past. And that's a good segue, quite honestly, to, to where I wanted to kind of go with this next question. We're going to talk about your book, Be Seen, a lot towards the end here, but I wanted to bring you back to a time when you were afraid of being seen for who you actually wanted to be in the long run, when when you had dreams, but you were afraid to shut them from the mountaintop. And I want to ask this question in the context of, I know there's a couple different types of people out there listening. I know that there are people who are afraid to be seen at all. So maybe they're in the very beginning of their journey. And then I know that there's this whole group of people, you know them and I know them, where it looks like they're doing pretty good but they're afraid to be fully seen. They kind of put themselves out there. They kind of do the social media. They kind of do their podcast, but they're not being real, real. And they're afraid of being fully seen. So when was a time so we can all relate to you before you were this megastar on all the stages that you were last afraid to be seen for your, your authentic self? My story is a little different than the typical story. And it's really interesting because I was an actress. So I was being seen. Like, quote unquote, being seen. I was on a TV show where lots of people were seeing me all the time. But this TV show was really interesting because 
I wasn't an actress playing a character. Like if, if I had a new name and I was actually stepping into a character and everyone knew I was an actress, it was a talk show. And it was a talk show about heavy metal music where I was like basically like the Vanna White of this show. And so I was Jen. I was me. I was not a character. I was Jen. And I, I found myself getting this gig as an actress. So I was auditioning for gigs all the time. And I was like, wow, I got this gig on this TV show on VH1. This is phenomenal. I can play this part. But it, I was me. And so what I had to do was I had to become this version of myself and portray and be seen as this version of me that was actually alive. Because Chris, as you know, I'm not a heavy metal girl. Oh, I've, no. never, I've never been a heavy metal girl. No, I'm probably the furthest from thing from a heavy metal girl. Nothing wrong with heavy metal people. They're awesome. I spent a lot of time with them, but I just never liked the music. But I, I was like, I could play this part. I could be this girl for you. I'll be a good little actress and I will become this. And so I did. And I, I heavy metaled myself up and I, I portrayed this version of myself. It ended up being for five years, but I wasn't. And so I was being seen, but I was being seen with this gigantic mask on. And I was not showing the world who I truly was. And what ended up happening was deep down inside of me, the bigger the show got, I was like, every single season that went on, I was like, you are a liar. You are living a lie. You are not being you. You are so much more than this. And then there was this huge fear that kept creeping in. That was like, what's going to happen when this show ends? Everyone thinks that you're this and you're not this. And it really hit me hard. When I was invited to this dinner for the first time, it was an entrepreneurial dinner for women. And it was the editor-in-chief of a really big magazine, uh, like a fashion magazine. And she invited a bunch of women over to her house to have dinner that were doing like big things in the world. And I felt so honored to be invited to this dinner. And she invited me from this show. And I walk into the dinner and she looks at me and she goes, oh my God, I almost didn't invite you to this because I thought you were really scary, but you're so nice. And that's when I knew I was like, I am portraying a version of myself that is a total lie. And when you do that and you're out of alignment with who you truly are and you're being seen as somebody that you're not, a couple of things happen. First thing was I was attracting an audience of people that thought I was something that I wasn't. And keeping up with that is exhausting because mm -hmm. you have to keep up this lie. And I couldn't keep doing it anymore. So I had this huge audience of people. I'm like, what am I going to do with these people when they realize this isn't who I am? And then number two, I was out of alignment. Like, my whole life started crumbling because I was portraying this version of me. I, I was in a toxic relationship with the wrong guy. I was partying all the time. I was finding myself in bad environments with around negative people. And I was just lost. And I felt trapped inside this, this fake persona that I had put on. And I truly believe that when you're out of alignment and you know you are, and you can't get yourself back in, because no matter what I did, I put so the fear of what it would look like on the other side if I left was way bigger than, than the pain, I guess, was to be in, in it. So I just kept ignoring the voice, ignoring it and staying in it. But the universe stepped in and smacked me back into alignment and, and it hurt. The show got canceled. The guy left me for one of my friends and I was in a severe depression because I was so lost and I was severely bulimic and I was addicted to Adderall and I was in the darkest place of my life and I had no more money because I had spent it all. I basically, this was rock bottom for me. I found myself in this like tiny little room within an apartment on the Upper East Side with six other actors that lived there at this little window that faced a brick wall. And I had no job. I had no relationship. And I had no idea who the hell I was anymore. And so while I was so seen for so long, it didn't matter. I yeah. needed to see who I really was. Yeah. And I looked out that window and I was like, one day I'll know why this happened. One day I'll know why this happened. I just kept saying that over and over and over again. And eventually, eventually, not overnight, but eventually, I started to figure it out. Okay, so the first thing I heard when you were talking is there is nothing worse than waking up and being somebody who you're really not, but having to continue being that person. I mean, that is the worst feeling in a whole wide world. I've been there before, and you spend so much time and energy and effort surrounding yourself with people, making them think that you're one thing. And all of a sudden, you're like, this is miserable. I don't want to keep up this charade. So that's a version of being seen that nobody wants to fall into. That one is a trap. And I think sometimes that makes other people see others who have done that and say, see, I don't want to end up in that situation, so I'm not going to be seen at all. So talk to me about the person who hasn't gone down that path yet. They're just flat out afraid. Like They know they have a message. They know they have a business. They know that they're meant for something big. But all they can think about is, well, if I start speaking my truth, this person's going to say something. If I start showing up big, these people are going to make fun of me. How do those people like shift their life into being seen? 
I can only speak about this from my personal experience because when I shifted out of being on that metal show and started being real Jen, I, I call myself real Jen in the book, like the real version of myself, I was petrified to start talking about all the other stuff. Completely petrified because of everybody else on the internet that I was, or, or what are they going to think? I don't even know who they are necessarily, but it's like, what are they going to think of me? And we can't even really put a name on they. Maybe sometimes it's like my cousin or my friend from high school or whoever on the internet, which by the way, just so everyone that's listening right now, nobody really cares that much about yeah. you. They're all worried about themselves. No yeah. one is sitting there judging you the way that we think they're judging. Us. That's number one. Number two, the thing that I always think about now, and, and this is what remind, I remind myself of this every single day when I'm afraid to be seen, because sometimes I get scared to be seen now too. It's, it's a normal emotion. It's a normal thing that we feel as humans. We care about what other people think. We don't want to be judged. We get scared. So you need to remember that if you have a service, a story, or a product that helps people, and there is somebody out there that your story can help or your experience can help, and the reason that you want to be seen is so that you can help someone else with your story. It's your responsibility to be out there and to be seen so that they can find you. Because every day that you're not putting yourself out there and you're not being seen is another day that those people that need you so badly are going to go follow someone else or listen to someone else or maybe even pay someone else that's probably not as good as you or definitely doesn't care as much as you do because you're too afraid to be seen because you're scared of what other people will think of you or what they're going to, if they're going to judge you or what you look like or what you sound like. That's all wrapped up in yourself. Yeah. So what I do is I focus on these four letters and I say it a lot in the book. We say this a lot in our content, but this helps me every day. So I want to give it to your listeners. H-O-P-E, help one person every day. So if you make it your goal to just show up and pull out that camera, don't think about you. Think about the person on the other side of the iPhone that's listening. Think about them and talk to them because we don't get nervous when we're just talking to a friend. We don't yeah. forget the words. We don't get self-conscious if we're sitting at dinner with our best friend helping them. Yeah. Envision them and help them and just talk to them and then press go. And remember that I promise you, I know this to be true. You and I know a lot of successful people, Chris, mm -hmm. no happy, successful person is spending any time putting negative comments in other people's pages. No, and not a one, literally not, not a one, not a one, not a one. So if somebody is commenting negatively or making fun of you or saying something mean on your content, it has absolutely nothing to do with you because happy, successful people don't do that. Yep. So what I do is I just know and I understand that that person must be hurting. Hurt people try to hurt other people. That's how it works. And I send empathy and compassion to that person. And I remember all of the people out there that really do need to hear my story. Because yeah. I think about how badly I needed to hear other people's story back in the day. And you and Lori have a lot to do with that. We can go on that tangent too, if you want. <laughs> Jen, you, you said two things I want to make sure everybody caught, because this might be the most empowering part of, of the entire show here. One, nobody who's actually qualified to judge you is sitting there with any time or any intentionality of judging you. Maybe some people who you actually shouldn't care what their opinion matters, maybe they have time to judge you, but the actual ones that you aspire to either collaborate with or be like or, or really serve they don't have any time, nor do they have any reason to judge you. So, so that's freeing in itself. But the second thing you said is even more freeing. And that is every day you're choosing between fulfilling your own needs or somebody else's needs. In other words, if you hold back from being seen, you're being selfish. You're fulfilling your own needs. Ooh, I'm going to be safe so nobody can make fun of me. But then you're doing that at the expense of somebody else's need that needed to hear your story, that needed your coaching, that needed your guidance, that needed your example, that need, right? And so every day, if you're not being seen as loud and proud as you possibly can, it means you're choosing yourself over somebody else. And that helps to take the pressure off. Because at the core, we all want to be the hero, right? That's how we're, we're programmed. So when you think of it that way, it helps to take the pressure off of who cares if somebody's going to make fun of me? I need to do this for somebody else that needs to see this. And listen, we get good at what we practice. The more that we do it, the easier it becomes. Everything, the more reps. Unfortunately, like really great things, they take a little bit of hard work. They take discomfort. They take being scared. They take putting fear in the passenger seat of your car and just letting it drive along with you. Like I never tell anybody that, that being seen on the internet is easy or that you're going to be fearless when you do it or you're going to be completely without fear and it's always going to feel easy. It's actually going to feel hard. But the key is not to be fearless. The key is to become more courageous. And that means being able to do it with fear there anyway. And every single time you take that action step and you allow yourself to be seen and you post something and you get a little win, whether that is somebody DMing you and saying, wow, 
you really helped me today. Mm-hmm. Your one post really helped me. That just puts more coins in your confidence bank. Holy shit, when I'm seeing good things happen, I help other people. And that makes the next time a little bit more easy, but you've got to do it in order to gain that momentum, in order to gain that proof and that trust in yourself that when you do the hard thing, you grow on the other side, good things happen. So unfortunately, you just got to do the hard stuff sometimes. Yeah. And if you really have that strong why, where you really know that there's somebody out there that needs your gifts and you think about that person and you visualize them and you know that they're walking around the planet, it's not about you, then you can be willing to put yourself out there and experience a little bit of that discomfort to get past that point and start. And that's when it all takes off. Yeah. But I always tell Lori, like, and for those of you, y'all know Lori is amazing life, but if she never put herself out there and she was not seen her podcast, mm-hmm. I would not be in the position that I'm in. Yeah, that's crazy. Matter of fact, I encourage everyone to go over and listen to the podcast that you did with Lori, where you actually tell that story because it's a really powerful example. You need to be seen so that somebody else who is meant to be really special in this world can be seen. It's a, a literal living example of it. And it's actually a great segue into the platform that you've really gone all in on and chosen to be seen on. Now, I want to be clear. We see you all over media. We see you all over social media. We see you on your own podcast and on other people's podcasts galore. But the platform where you've really decided I'm going to be the best, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is on stages, the biggest stages, the best stages. You've gone all in on being one of the best speakers in the world, not an opinion, but an actual fact based on what other people on ratings and all these other things out there. Why did you choose that stage, no pun intended, to be seen on the most? What did it mean to you? What was the strategy behind it? Or was it just where you wanted to be seen? Since I was a little girl, I've been a performer. That's what I always thought my purpose was. And this is actually a really interesting lesson that I've learned just recently. And uh, it's really where all the, the everything in the book comes to this realization at the end. When I was when I was little, and I want everyone to think about themselves when they think about this story, like what was the thing that you thought you always wanted to do right when you were a little kid, before the conditioning came in, before people told you what you could do or what you shouldn't do or how you should be? I was like, I want to be a performer. And I remember being on stages as a little girl, because I was a a child performer. And I remember thinking on the stage, like I have these very vivid memories of thinking in my mind, like this is what I want to do the rest of my life. This is the greatest feeling, like seeing the audience and feeling the energy and, and taking them out of where they were, like if they were having a bad day and they're laughing, they're applauding. And I just loved it. It was my favorite. And if you came over to my house when I was five or six, Chris, there was a 110% chance that you were going to sit in the living room and I was going to perform for you. Oh my God. You and Lori are the same children. That's hilarious. We are soul sisters. I'm a performer. It just sometimes it's in you. So I pursued that thinking that my purpose was to be a traditional actress. I thought that was the only way to do it. I went to school for musical theater. I did the whole New York City kill yourself auditioning day in and day out, audition after audition after audition, getting heard no again and again and again and again to get one gig, two gigs. And uh, I thought that was the path for me until, until all of this stuff happened that I told you earlier on. And this is crazy. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. But somehow entrepreneurship landed in my lap. Yeah. And I started to follow that path and I learned something about myself that, wow, maybe all of this acting stuff was preparing me to be a really amazing entrepreneur because all of the greatest lessons I've learned in entrepreneurship, now that I look backwards, come from my acting career, how to deal with rejection, how to follow up, how to be persistent, how to perform, how to talk to people, how to communicate, how to sell myself, how to promote myself. And now that I've found myself speaking on stages, I'm like, wow, this is how I use all of the training that I got when I was a kid, day in and day out, being on all those shows, rehearsing for hours and hours and hours, performing all over the country with a Broadway show. All of that was for this. I would have never known if I didn't allow myself to follow this path. And I stayed so hyper-focused on being a traditional actress. But because I allowed myself to see where life would take me and allow myself to not be so dialed in on just one purpose and explore other things that I I realized what the real purpose was and had that moment. And I talk about this in in the last chapter of my book. This is where it really solidified for me. My dad is like my best friend in the world. And he's always been my biggest fan my whole life. When I was an actress, when I was a little girl, he'd always be in the front row, like flowers. Like he'd always say to me, like, you're going to be a star on Broadway and cheering me on every, every step of the way. 
And my dad has multiple sclerosis. So my dad can't travel. You got to see my dad at my wedding. And we had, we got married in Florida because he couldn't travel. And he's never been able to really see me speak, which is my version of performing now. But he's so proud of me. I got asked to speak in Florida last, it was, I think it was a year and a half ago or two years ago, right near where he lives. And he was so excited. He was like, I don't care how big that casino is. It was at the, the Hard Rock Hotel Casino. He's like, I'm going to walk through that whole casino with my cane and I'm going to sit in the front row and I'm going to see you speak. So my dad goes and it's in front of all these real estate investors. So I'm the only girl, so this is typical, the only woman on the stage with all these guys. And I've got all these like bro real estate investors standing up and visualizing and crying. And my dad's looking around and he's seeing this little girl, this little girl, like making all these people stand up and cry. And we get in the car. My dad has tears in his eyes and he looks at me and he's like, this is what it was all for. Wow. All of it. It all makes sense now. This is what you were meant to do. All the auditions, all the rehearsals, all the rejection, all the performing. It wasn't for that. And we couldn't have told you that then. Who yeah. knew? Yeah. And that was like, holy crap, you never know. And maybe I still don't know where I'm supposed to go later on. Who knows what I'm going to evolve into next? But that's what's so exciting about life. What I love about that story is you took your core interest and your core strength. And you said, this is where I'm going to be seen the most. Right In your case, it was literally on a stage. And I think there's a lot of people listening that feel like they have to be speaking on stages or they're not going to be seen, or they feel like they have to have a podcast or they're not going to be seen, or they feel like they have to be on YouTube or they're not going to be seen. And you may or may not have felt that pressure at one point, but as of today, you're saying those things, I'm just going to kind of fill with repurposing my main thing. And that is being on these stages. I'm going to lean into my joy and lean into my strength. And I think if, if anyone's taking anything out of that, I hope it's that lean into your joy and your strength. Make that your main stage, no pun intended, right? If it's a podcast, great. If it's YouTube, yep. great. If it's real stage, it's great. And then just repurpose that into the other pieces so that you can amplify yourself being seen. But go show up on the one where you really want to go show up on the most and the rest the rest of it will take care of itself. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. I think there's a lot of people online right now that's saying there's things that you have to do. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything that you have to do. No. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do anything. And I love that you said that. Because if you don't love the way that you're being seen and you don't love the delivery of what, how you're creating your content, you're not going to do it. And the most important thing about creating content and building a brand online is consistency. Mm -hmm. And so if you absolutely hate video and it is so hard for you to do it and you hate it so much, then you're not going to be consistent. You're not going to do it. But what if you love audio? What if yeah. audio is your vibe? You don't like being seen on camera fine. You could create an amazing podcast. If you love what you're doing, you're going to do it consistently. And that's really all that matters. And then, like you said, what I do and everyone that's listening, if you don't follow me on social, go follow me. You'll see that the majority of my content is me repurposing me being on stage. I do that for a few reasons. Number one, my goal is to be a speaker. So I want everyone and their mom to go onto my page when they hear about me and see that I'm a speaker. So if you want to be seen as something, make sure you're showcasing that on your online resume, which is your, your social, your Instagram, your TikTok, your Facebook, your YouTube, all the places. So I make sure that that's very, very forward facing. You want to hear me speak? I'm not going to send you a speaker reel. I'm going to send you to my Instagram because there's so many reels of me speaking, so much footage of me doing the thing that I want to do. That's the first reason. And the second reason is I'm not necessarily creating content every day. I don't have time to do that. I'm running a business. I'm documenting my life. So if I have any opportunity to speak on stage, you better believe I'm videoing it. I'm videoing myself in the hallway as I go there. I'm videoing myself having conversations before and after. I'm videoing myself in the car on the way with the videographer making content there. And I'm getting all the content that I need for the month out of that one speaking engagement and repurposing it to make it super easy because I don't necessarily love sitting around writing or creating content, but I do love speaking. Yeah, I love that. You just gave everyone the roadmap to efficiency, right? The efficiency of being seen. Lean into one thing, lean into it really, really well, and then make sure you don't miss the chance to repurpose that one speaking event, that one podcast, that one YouTube, whatever it is that you're leaning into. I want to switch into something else that's kind of tactical. And I want to ask you, because you've spent years helping people do this, there's two types of individuals listening right now. Person number one, they're desperate to be seen in 2024 as we go into this next year. Like they're like, hey, don't talk to me about being afraid. I ain't afraid. I'm ready to go. But they're saying, I've got no budget. Where should I start? How do I be seen with no budget? That's person number one. Person number two, they're like, hey, I got some real money to spend on being seen. I can 
get articles. I can buy my way on the stage. I can do all these other things. Where should they invest their money? So talk to me about both these people. Person number one, they got no money, but they're desperate to be seen. Person number two, they've got some real money to invest. Where should these two individuals invest for 2024 to be seen? I don't think you need to invest anything to be seen. I'm just going to go, we're both individuals. You don't, if you want to invest money, that's fantastic. That's amazing. But I find that all you really need is a smart. So this is very interesting. And I'm going to, I really want to hit home on this because if more people knew this, this it's like, if one thing has changed my life in this last year, it would be this. I started going live every single day. I put my makeup on, on Instagram live every single morning, Monday through Friday, no matter what, non-negotiable. Now, why has this been the biggest game changer for me? I want to be a speaker and I can't get on a stage every single day. You can't, I can't, I can't get on a stage every day. I can't get on a stage more than a couple of times a month even, but I do have a stage in my pocket. This stage is basically free because I use it anyway. So it's my phone. So maybe it's not free. Maybe it's a thousand bucks, whatever it is to have your (laughs) smartphone. But if you're listening to this, you have some sort of smartphone. Everybody has one. You have a stage in your pocket. I don't care if there's five people watching me or a hundred people watching me. I'm practicing speaking. I'm practicing answering questions. I'm practicing being vulnerable enough to be seen. I'm practicing getting my discomfort reps in because it's not comfortable to be seen and be talking off the cuff. And every day I do that and I'm building community and I'm building engagement on my social and I'm getting an insane amount of content. It's been the greatest thing I've ever done. I don't have to spend any money. I just pick up my phone and I create videos. So what I would say to both groups is, that you do not have to spend any money. Yesterday, Chris and I, we did this really fun thing where we went to Target and we filled up two shopping carts full of toys. We wanted to donate a bunch of toys to kids in need this Christmas that need toys. And we were like, I want to incentivize other people to do this. So we were going to hire a video person and spend all this money. We're like, you know, we don't need to hire anybody. We took our iPhones and we selfie videoed us doing this. Mm-hmm. And we videoed all the, all the toys getting into the shopping carts. And we did it ourselves. It cost $0 other than, of course, buying the toys. But we were ready to, and excited to invest in that anyway. And, and we're going to just edit it ourselves and put it on social. That costs nothing. And the majority of the reels for me that do the best are usually not the really produced ones that I pay someone to video. They're usually the ones that I just pick up my phone and I talk to the camera because people like to see the real stuff. So as much as I know you want me to tell you where you should invest your money, honestly, when you want to just start being seen, the key is to be consistent. The key is to do it no matter what. And I think if you put too many obstacles in front of why you can't do it, like, oh, I need the great equipment. I need to pay to be in the greatest articles so I can repurpose them. All you really need is your phone. And you can do audio, you can do written word, you can do video, you can do photos, but you've got everything right here. You don't need to spend it. That is the best answer ever for everybody listening. It's the no excuses, yet highly effective answer. Like they're not willing to put in the daily reps the way you do every single morning. When It's funny because I'll be on Instagram and I'll see the get ready with me thing pop up live every single day. So I can vouch every single damn day. <laughs> I, I see that you're you're on there doing that. It's It's, it's awesome. I want to shift to introverts. I, at the core, am a massive introvert. Lori, at the core, is a massive introvert. I think sometimes that surprises people, but we really are. And you've written in your book, and you've talked a lot about how to be seen and how to network if you're an introvert. Would you give us some tips there? Yeah. Chris and I are both introverts as well, and you would never know. So I've had to gamify my networking. We, Our company's called Super Connector Media, and we're really good at making connections. But it's not always our, our favorite thing to do. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. I love connecting with people because I know what happens when you form deep connections. It's my favorite thing in the world, but I don't love the idea of going out to networking events and having to make that happen. So I do have some tips for people that are more like me, the people that initially kind of pray for everyone to cancel plans. I know <laughs> I, do it. I pray for everyone to cancel plans, but then I, they don't. And then I go and I'm always so happy. I went. Always so happy I went. There's never a time that I'm not. And even if the time is not fun, you're still happy you went because you pushed yourself to do something and maybe you have a fun story. So here's how I, I gamify my networking events. If I, let's just put this into context where it's like you, you've got a big event that you're going to where you want to make some powerful connections to make some opportunities happen. The first thing that I do is I just focus on, okay, I'm not going to go into this room focusing on like how to be the sparkliest, shiniest, have the most interesting story in the world and just like make everyone love me. I'm going to go into that room being interested and trying to figure out how I can help other people. My goal is how do I figure out how to help 
at least a couple individuals in this room. And so that changes, it shifts my mindset from being so worried about, am I good enough? Is my story yeah. good enough? What am I going to say? Oh, I have to talk about myself. I don't have to do any of that. I'm going to go around and I'm going to make other people feel seen. And I'm going to ask them questions and I'm going to get really curious about them. And I'm going to figure out what I can do to help them. That, if you're in a good conversation with somebody and you just do that and you ask somebody a bunch of questions, they're going to feel like you are the greatest conversationalist of all time. They're going to leave that party remembering you. And you're going to leave that party having everything that you need to be able to follow up with value which is one of my tips. Because after you've gone and you've met someone, the number one most important thing when it comes to networking and creating connections is not the meeting, it's the follow-up. And many people follow up wrong. Many people, I get so many bad follow-ups, it's ridiculous. Everyone that's listening to this, you're never gonna follow up wrong again. Please do not follow up with an ask. Do not. Always follow up with value. Follow up with a give. Your goal of that networking experience was to find out how you can help that human being and then when you follow up, the secret to getting your follow-up responded to and to creating a real relationship after that event is following up with something that you can do for that person. Hey, I loved our conversation about X, Y, Z. And this is the best example that I love to give. Let's say you were talking to somebody and they're like, oh my God, my kid's first soccer game is tomorrow. He's so nervous. We're getting ready. It's tomorrow morning. I would follow up that next day and be like, how was Johnny's soccer game? How did he do? Send me your address. I've got a really cute little gift for him. Maybe I'd send him a soccer ball or something like that. That is the ultimate follow-up. How do you think about how you can help that person? Or, hey, I love that you said that you, you love sushi. I remember talking to you about the sushi restaurants in LA. I know that you're traveling to LA next week. I'm going to make you a reservation at my favorite spot. Wow. Like, how do you make someone feel like you saw them? Being seen is about making other people feel seen. Mm. So those are two. And then one other thing that I really love to do as an introvert, and this is, this is my secret sauce, and, and hopefully you guys will all use it because it's so fun is I always go into every networking event with a goal. And when my goal has been accomplished, I can leave without FOMO. Because the thing that is always holding me back at networking events is I don't know when I can leave. Yeah. I'm like, oh, should I leave now? And then if I leave early, I'm like, oh, should I have stayed later? I really want to go. But if you have a goal and you go in, you say, okay, I want to make three really powerful relationships here. Have at least three great conversations where we exchange Instagrams, we take a selfie. Once I've made those three, I can leave. And I don't have to tell anybody I'm leaving. I can just leave. And that way, I always feel like I've accomplished something. I've done the thing that I went there to do. And I feel like I won. I feel like I'm a success. And then my introvert self can leave and get in my bed and watch my Netflix and chill or whatever I want to do. So I love to go in with a goal and gamify it. So it's like, okay, I got three. Maybe sometimes you stretch yourself and you do five. Maybe sometimes your goal is like, I want to take 16 selfies today. Taking mm -hmm. a selfie is a great way to connect with people because then you can follow up and send that selfie to them. Be like, hey, you know, it was great meeting you. Here's a great shot of yourself. So go in with a goal. Brilliant. And that takes away so much of the fear when you just get tactical about, here's how I'm going to go into this room as an introvert and make sure I leave with value, right? So just to recap, number one, be interested, not interesting. That takes the pressure off of having to say the right thing or do the right thing. You just go in there and be like, all guns blazing, be interested in everybody else. Questions, questions, questions. Number two, I love this. I haven't heard anyone go into this much detail about the follow-up, like how to follow up with value. Don't follow up with an ask. The little ideas you had about, hey, remember, you're going to LA, here's my favorite sushi restaurant, make your reservation, right? Taking that one step further, not just saying it was great to meet you, doing something kind for them, freaking brilliant. And of course, the third one I hadn't heard before either until I heard you speak about it in the past, and that is have a goal. Like this one spoke to me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make two great contacts. And then I can go. Then I don't feel the pressure of having to be here the whole time, the anxiety of having to be here the whole time. I make two great contacts, find two people I really, really like, and then I'm, I'm out of there after that. And that's, that's kind of a, a really cool, safe way to know that you don't have to spend the whole night there in that painful anxiety of going around trying to strike up conversations. Oh, there's nothing worse, <laughs> I think. So at least you're intentional and you do your damn thing and then you feel good when you leave. I want to feel good. I want to feel proud of myself. I don't want to feel like I just like bopped around and like tried to do and then I just stayed because I felt like I had to. That makes me feel a little defeated. So I want everybody to win and feel that dopamine that comes with like getting home, being like, we did it. High five, like a high five, Chris, like we met four people. That's what we said we were going to do. Now we're going to follow up and help them out. And, and we're going to continue on those relationships. And it feels good. Oh, my God. I love that. OK, I want to shift to uh, talking about money real quick. There is a payoff to being seen. The more you're seen, the easier it is to monetize whatever it is you're passionate about monetizing. You guys have done that really, really well. If people buy your book, that is one example of being able to monetize being seen. But it's a better example of if they buy your book, they're going to learn in there. 
how to grow their audience so that they can then be able to sell more of whatever it is they're passionate about helping the world through. So give me a specific example, being that you've put so much time and effort into being seen and you've really put a lot of time and effort into it. Give me a specific example of how it has helped you on the financial front. What has been the reward or the payoff? Gosh, I mean, there's been so many. It's all indirect ROI. So the more visible I am, let's just look at, so perfect. We'll talk about the book deal. And anyone here that wants to get a major book deal with a major publisher, something really interesting happened after I got my book deal. So I ended up getting a very, very big, substantial book deal from a major publisher. And it was a huge dream of mine. It was a dream come true. As a first-time publisher, we need to point that out because that's rare. That is almost unheard of. Yeah, it was really, really awesome. And it wasn't because my book idea was amazing because actually the the book that I sold to them was a different book than it was different. So they didn't buy my book idea. They bought me. They bought me and my audience because I had been building my audience for years and years and years. But what's really interesting is, and I think I introduced Lori to this agent. So I think we have the same agent now. Um, My agent's one of the top book agents, literary agents in the world. And we started working together. But well after we started working together, he sent me, he's like, I screenshotted your Instagram years ago. And I sent it to my assistant. I was like, let's talk to this girl about doing a book deal. But it never ended up happening. Like we never reached out. The reason that he did that was because he said to me, he's like, I've seen you everywhere. You're, mm-hmm. You've got such a great brand. You're so visible. I can't open up my computer or my phone without seeing something from you. And that's what you want everybody to say. I see you everywhere because you want a TV show. You want a book. You want a deal, a partnership. You want people to sponsor your podcast. All of that stuff that most people that I talk to that want to build brands online want. Those and even actors and actresses now, when they go to auditions, I'm hearing that the casting directors are asking, how many followers do you have? How big is your audience? Because companies want to buy people or want to bring people onto their platforms that come with an audience. Your audience has now become actual capital. It really, really is. Your audience is you're investing in your life capital. I've actually met moms who are investing in their kids' hockey Instagram pages or their cheerleading Instagram pages or their basketball or their football because they know that when they're going to be promoting themselves or trying to get into colleges and get scholarships for their sports and get onto sports teams, Followers matter. Audience matters. Like you need to have visibility online. It's an investment when it comes to business and it, and it comes to your business, which is you and your brand and whatever it is that you're selling. The more people that you have that are listening and paying attention to you, the more valuable the business of you is. So the more other people are willing to pay and the more other people are wanting to get you involved in whatever it is that they're doing. It's just the fact of the world that we live in today in 2020. It's an inconvenient truth that a lot of people like to pretend is not true, but let's put everybody on notice right now. I will tell you that if there are two people that have the same message and the same talent, but one has a much larger following, the person with the larger following or with more influence is going to get the job. They're going to get the stage. They're going to get the book deal over the other person every single time. So you can sit around and you say, that's not fair. You can sit around and say, but I've worked so hard to just be great at my craft. Guys, that's just your foot in the door these days. What is going to make you be the person who gets the role, gets the book deal, gets the stage, gets on the podcast or not, is going to be, can you also offer an audience and some influence to make somebody choose you over the person next to you? Like it, don't like it, don't care. It's how the world works. So now that you're on notice, great, let's freaking do something about it. And doing something about it would be like buying your book so they can learn how to do it. So where can they find your book, Jen? Anywhere. It's everywhere. Anywhere books are sold. It's literally it's omnipresent. If you freaking it's Google be seen, it's going to be freaking yeah. everywhere. Click the link and buy it. I've got a surprise though. Every time that we have friends on that have books, like we just had Jim Quick on a couple of weeks ago in the whole nine yards. Every time we have friends on that have books, we love to do book giveaways. So here's what we're going to do. Anybody that takes you and me on Instagram with their favorite takeaway or their favorite breakthrough from this episode, the first 50 people that do that, I'm going to personally buy them a book and send it out to them directly. So it's a race. Like as soon as this episode comes out, the first 50 of you that takes both Jen and I, so that Jen can understand how she helped you take both Jen and I on Instagram, I will personally buy you and and send you a book for the first 50 people. And it's just a fun way for people to show you, Jen, the impact that you made by taking 45 minutes or an hour and and coming on and, and just pouring into them. That is so nice. I love that. I can't wait to see everybody's posts and shares. And that's that's so nice. Chris. Thank you. So in the last minute or two here, what would you say is the absolute key to being seen and to being fulfilled and to being happy and to being successful as we head into 2024? 
Well, there's not one key. There's a lot of keys. And there's never, and again, just to go with the theme, there's not one right or wrong way to do it. It's really to figure out what your goals are and what you really want and get self-aware enough to know what you're great at, what you love and what you enjoy. Because if you're not doing something that you love and that you enjoy that doesn't feel good to you and doesn't feel in alignment with what your personal goals are, not with what the goals of everybody else in the world wants for you or what you think you should be, then you're not going to be happy. You're going to wake up one day with a business or a brand that you hate like I did. So as you go into 2024, I think what's really important is to get really clear on who are you really? Like, what do you really want? Regardless of what anybody's ever told you, what you should be or what you should want or what you should do, what do you want? Who do you want to help? Why do you want to show up and who are you talking to? And once you get all of that in alignment and it comes true from who you are, your gut, your heart, your soul, and you get self-aware to know and like, what are you really good at? What lights you up? What makes you feel in the pocket? I talk about being in the pocket in the book all the time. For me, that's being on stage. What is that for you? And how can you implement that more into your life and really use that as your vehicle to be seen? Because there's not one right or wrong way to do it. And there's only one you in this entire world. There's probably a zillion other people that do the same thing as you. Just going to break it to you. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how unique your thing is. There's other people that do it. Now, there is only one you. There's only one person like you that has your story, that speaks the way that you speak, that has the same little just like, like isms that you have. So shine those isms. Be more of that because that's the thing that's going to make you stand out. Be more you. And I guess that is what I would say is going to be the key is to do it your way. Be more you. That is the best advice you could have ever given people as they head into 2024. Because everything unlocks when you be more you. Hey, I already, you already told everybody where they could get the book. Where can they find you and, and communicate with you? Simplest way. I'm going to give it simple, simple. Instagram's great. I live on Instagram. I'm also on the other platforms, but just go to IG because I'm there in my DMs. At Jen underscore Gottlieb, one N. At Jen underscore Gottlieb. All right. Well, listen, thank you for being on. It means the absolute world. I can't wait for our next hangout. We are taking personal responsibility to get that thing booked. To yes. anyone listening, guys, that's like how you maintain friendships. Everybody's busy at this level, but you have to take personal responsibility for booking these fun little get-togethers as well. So Lori and I will take on that responsibility, but just know that I'm so grateful you came on and that you shared all of this with everybody and that you took the time to write this book because I know that's not easy. A lot of lives are going to be better thanks to you. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. I always love Literally, it. my pleasure. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.